Okay, let's head into a little bit more of an intermediate, what I call an intermediate level of painting blossoms. So you understand kind of the, the shape of the blossoms of round. And then we have ovals, and then we're pulling the blossoms, uh, the petals in. And, of course, now what we're going to do is start to rock and roll and turn the blossoms. Let's take a look here. We're going to start to rock and roll and turn the blossoms, start varying the colors a little bit that we use in our blossoms. And I have a lot of different lessons in the book to, to show you some of the different ways we're going to set up some of these uh, different flowers, folding blossoms up and... Uh, um, then uh, layering, where we do layering the blossoms and getting some very casual, casual looks here. And how do I go about getting some of these looks that you have to these uh, flowers once you understand it? Now, this is going to take a lot of practice. And one of the things that's very important to remember, every time you paint these flowers, you're going to paint them different. Now, I can give the same type of feeling if I wanted to paint this white flower again. I can get the same feeling but it's such a casual technique, I'm not going to be able to copy it petal for petal. Give me a stroke design with a premixed color, put it in, put it in, put it in. Yes, I can be a Xerox painter and I can copy it. But here, I can capture the same type of feeling, but I'm not going to be able to paint the same flower petal for petal. So don't try to do that. Use the photos as reference. What I always try to tell my students is when they go to paint something like this is, pick out a few things in the flower that you don't like, and change it to what you do like. And what that does is it li it gives you the freedom as an artist to change something, okay? And then you won't try to copy so much. So let's take a look. Now, what, what we have here as a flower is our center, like when you look at this one that's here, here is our center. And uh, rather than having all the petals pull in, what I do is sometimes I lift one petal up here. It forms almost like the bowl, like a rose. So instead of pulling the next petals in like this, I pull it down towards the center. So if this was the center right here, here would be the edge of the center. Matter of fact, let me just take a little bit of dark brown. If my center was right here like this, you see, all these petals would be pulling in like this. But by then taking this this uh, color here and uh, and making or lifting this up here like this, going up, I sink the center uh, in behind this uh, this front petal and sets it down. And so I set a few things down. So the angle at which you're going to stroke now becomes very important. And remember what I said about setting some of them. Like here you can see like the chisel edge, the chisel edge, the chisel edge uh, makes this look like it comes back down in. So like right here, I'm pulling some down in and then I'm chiseling some short like chisels make you look more like you're looking at the edge of it here. And this particular petals here, as they come down, they're widening through like this. So instead of pulling them to a point, I'm widening them out a little bit back behind that center. So you're seeing everything radiate out from that particular center. So a lot of people ask me, boy, how do you get some of these flowers to turn and, and to pivot like that? It's always based around the center. Everything's got to come in and join in underneath that center. So for the artist, you always got to keep your eye on that center. And you set the center and then you bring everything to the center. Well, so... If I was looking at this one that's right here, if I wanted to, I, I put this one on here. If I wanted to, say, push that center down, if I took away some of this light that's right here like this, so I sunk that center back down inside, and then I took some light color like this, and I stroked up like this, all of a sudden I would sink that center back behind these other petals. The center's still there, but you would see it sunk back behind some of these um these other petals. So it's envision visualizing it in layers and seeing, okay, uh, you know, where that center is and then what do I have to do to uh, stroke wise to say, okay, here comes, uh, you know, this, this petal in at an angle is pulling down or it's lifting or folding up or whatever. So let's take a look at uh, some of these flowers and, you know, how we go about accomplishing some of these flowers. First off, we have what we call the mosaic. And so in each one of the lessons, you're going to be putting down a mosaic of color. The very first thing I'm going to be doing is, and you got to remember with all of these, you uh, all of these lessons, you have, I put down what color in which to work into, just like we did with the beginning blossoms. I put down some wet color to begin, but now in a more intermediate uh, presentation of it, you're going to put down multiple colors, and you might even have a wet surface. Now, this is just a, a, a medium brown color here, 
Uh, but I might make any kind of uh, uh, any kind of surface that I want right in, you know, on the surface. Now, uh, you know, here. So this is just a medium brown. I could on some paintings, and you'll see me in some uh, some um, uh, DVDs in the painting simply process. I love to paint right into wet background. So I would get a surface ready like this. Let me step back just a bit with this. I get a surface ready like this for decoration and uh, put down some, you know, sealer in it and sand it. And then I'd put in some colors and I'd put in a wet color uh, into it. Uh, let's just say I'm going to make a, a softer, um, let's just make a, like a real soft gray green here, for, in, for example, maybe even a bit of blue into that here. And then I would go ahead and put this right onto the surface. And I love to, if I if I'm painting, I love to just, you know, take my three-quarter inch brush and work all kinds of colors into it. And you'll see me do that in all kinds of backgrounds. So maybe I have something going a little bit more blue-black or something like that, you know, down here at this side down here. And I love to work color. I love to to play the colors here. So we'll grab some of this and and put some of this into here like this and you know, let the color get a little darker down through here, you know, and let the colors evolve. I love backgrounds where the colors um, evolve. And you can take your hand and you can just move that around a little bit like that. And, you know, you might have more light or something up here into this edge or, or something, you know, and it's just, and I love to do this first to the background in a lot of paintings. Now, in, not all of them, you'll see it on a, you know, uh, of course, you, you don't always paint the same way, but you know I like to, I like to make my backgrounds evolve like this. So you'll see a lot of paintings where I'll do that, and I physically just get in there and attack it. But it's not like super, super heavy here. So if I pull it away a little bit, you can still see the brown there, and you won't see tons of puddles of it on the surface either. You'll see, you know, it's just lightly on the surface, so I can I can sketch into that. Okay, I can put colors into that. So that's one way. The other way is to just go ahead and apply your ovals and your circles like I do with some of these colors here. It's on a pure color. I didn't put the back wet background in, and then I just sketch in it and do some mosaic. Or you can do both, okay? Or you can do both. So sometimes I will I will paint like into a wet background like this. One of the reasons why I love the painting in a wet background because you can let some of that background show through every once in a while, and that just it just adds so much. So you're going to see that in some of the lessons. Just follow along with whatever I'm doing in that particular uh, lesson. But you can start out with a wet background and sketch your flower into that. You can start out with uh, a, a solid background like I do here and put some color into it and work your flowers like that. Uh, and every um, everyone can be a, a little bit you know, a little bit different. And if you, if you have this, you can put a model background on like this. And if you need a pattern, then you can go trace your pattern back on, or you can do like I do is I sit down and all I start to do is just right into the wet color. I'll start to sketch. Okay. I'm going to sketch a flower. Let's sketch a flower and let's sketch a flower. Let's put two flowers in here, right into this area and this, this area here. And how do we go about putting in a flower? Sometimes when I sketch, I'll use, I love to use that brown or a little brown and blue, uh, you know, our base brown. And, and, and I love to just sketch. Now, you, I, if you're doing into a wet background, you don't need to worry about that color because you can take your finger like this and soften that into that and make that disappear. You know, and what you're, what I want you to do so many times in decorative painting with a lot of uh, lessons, and I learned decorative painting a bunch of different ways. I started learning in oils, and in oils we did a lot of this kind of stuff, um, softening things out and everything. And in acrylics we did everything very, I want to say, uh, it, it's more crisp. and It's actually more sterile, and the paintings became very, very sterile. Follow and fill in the lines. And I want to teach you to be an artist, and an artist will sketch and smear around and do some things. and. Artists paint edges. There's a difference. Um, an edge, when we talk about an edge, is you can have what we call a found edge and a lost edge. And a found edge is an edge that comes forward. For example, 
This is a found edge. See how that, ed you really see the edge of that flower right there. Nice and crisp and clean. And you see that? And that causes it to advance. There's a nice found edge right into there. A lost edge is the back edge. It just kind of fades away. Well, where's really the edge? I really can't see it. Here's the found edge. I definitely see the found edge of the petal. But where's the edge of the petal right here? Okay? And that edges that understanding the edges of what it is that you're doing is what's going to give you uh, dimension into your a lot of dimension into your flowers okay so if you go in there specifically very perfect with everything that you do and you transfer this pattern and you're perfect 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 you, you tend to paint perfect edges and then you will not have as much interest to your painting, okay? So let's try to avoid that. Let's get very sketchy and then what we'll do here as we build our flowers is we build them with more edges. So we'll have softness out there and then we'll build more edges as, you know, where we want those edges. So some sometimes they won't have edges, sometimes they do have edges, okay? So you can do that. Now, if you're going to be painting into the lessons that are like here, you're going to put on a, a, a solid background. Then you're just going to put on a mosaic. And with the first blossoms, we put on some medium white. And then we, you know, maybe a little color here and there. And then we paint it into them. With here, you can have a wet background or you can put on a little bit of color. So let's say, for instance, that I, I'm going to paint kind of a reddish flower here, red and yellow. I love to have a mosaic. I just don't like to have a flower completely red or a flower completely yellow. I like to have a mosaic, so a red and a yellow flower. Um, so maybe I'll take some of my, my toned uh, uh, base yellow here, and I'll put some of that in here like this. And when you're painting like this, you'll, you'll notice that I'll paint a couple different ways. Uh, when the first blossoms, we stroked and we stroked, okay, here. Now, you can continue to stroke, but one of the things I do with a lot of the Painted Simply is I change my hand position now, and I'll use sometimes on the side like this. Now, what does this do? You can see what it does is it softens out my, and I'm not doing perfect, perfect strokes, especially with early on in the painting, and you're applying color, you don't want to, and I'll even just grab a big dollop of color and push it around. And this time you want to be, you want to kind of follow that feeling. You know, you can see the petals in here like this, okay? I can I can follow and see these petals here. And uh, then, but I just, and I kind of want to sketch it here like these going in and out. See, what I'm doing right here more than anything else is adding movement. I'm adding the movement that you would see in the petal going around like this, okay? And I'm adding that movement. But they're not, it's not perfect, perfect uh, strokes. Then I'll grab some other colors. Let's hear like a, anything. This can be a toned red here, okay? So I'll put a little red out here like this. And let's just add a little red, maybe a nice toned red side of the flower here. And I'll push that around. Okay, and I'll just push that around and pick up some more and just push that around here. And see, by pushing it in and out, this is what's also going to destroy the edge of your brush when you're pushing like this. But as, the more and more you paint with this brush, the prettier flowers it paints like this as the brush starts to fan out. Let's put a little bit of that in here. You know, so this is just, it, it could be any color. And you can follow along in the lessons for the colors. This is just to wa let you watch me paint one. Watch my brush and watch how I'm just moving things around. Okay, so I get some color in here like that. Maybe, and now you, you have to decide, okay, how much contrast do I want? Now, contrast is the plane of light colors against dark colors. So, you know, do I want to do I want this flower to be really pow in your face or do I want it to be softer? And let's just let's go a little cooler. Now, you have another red here, uh, darker red. So onto your palette here, the first red that I used was here. I could go here, which will give me darker. If I go here, I get cooler. This is the coolest color. It's brighter, but it's the coolest color on your palette. And if I put some of that back in here, especially onto the back side back here, you'll see I'll get more contrast, a lot of contrast, and just wiggle this around. Wiggle that around. You'll see I'll get more contrast, but I'm also going to start to get that temperature play, warm and cool temperature play, where I've got warmer colors and cool colors, and I love those temperature plays. And I tend to put this cool color, uh, 
not, you know, if I do anything in the front, it's right down in here where there would be the center, uh, right in here, center shadow. You don't want to come out here like this because you're into the warm area of the flower. So you want to keep it into the back of the flower or very close up to where the contact area or the shadow area would be from the on the flower from the center because this is cool, cool color. Cool color belongs where there is no light. And you can move this around. You don't want to soften too much, but you can move this around and I'll change fingers a little bit so I... And don't forget to wipe your finger, too. So I get some of these colors going around through here. I just love painting like this. Okay. Now I decide, okay, you can approach painting the center now, or you can, you know, put on some petals and paint the center later. You paint what it is that the flower needs. So don't, you know, you don't need to follow exactly step per step per step, uh, especially as you get, you know, more confidence with painting these flowers. You know, so I might make a quick statement here, take some, see if I'm going to have a center, a yellowish kind of center. I might make a quick statement there. But if I don't, if I, I have a dark center out through here, I need to put some kind of dark, and let's just go with kind of a, are, are brown even brown and even a little black into that i need some kind of dark in here too to take away some of that light so that when i do put some light in there it'll contrast up against that and you could use like a dark green or and then we want to put a little dimple in here maybe a little black so dark greens you could use blues you can use any colors in there you know, there's thousands of flowers out there go out there and find yourself some really pretty different you know uh, all different kinds of flowers, flower shapes and colors, and use those those photos of those, but apply this painting technique to it. Don't try to copy that flower. Just apply this technique and look at some of those different flower colors that you have, different centers and stuff like that to give you ideas. So I have that down. Now I could set the center now. I could set the center later. Normally what I'll do is, let's say I'm going to go back and I'm going to start building some yellows here. Maybe some yellows and some reds. I'll put some yellows, even maybe a bit of orange and a little red. I love to paint mosaic. I don't love to paint solid color. So I'll put some of this into my brush here and maybe a bit of white out here as well. So I'll be tapping this through. Now as I go to paint this flower here one of the things i want to do is put on the edges of the flowers and there's there's all kinds of ways so i'll tap this color in like this now so i have this light color here onto this edge now sometimes depending on the flower i'll draw a little edge so you'll see me just use the brush like this and draw a little edge of where these flowers a little different than what we did before I'll kind of sketch on some outside edges of the petals here like this, okay? So instead of pulling petals down, what I'm doing this time is I'm visioning where those petals are and I'm pulling some edges. So I'll put on some edges like this. So, you know, you might see little edges of where those little petals are sitting out here like that, okay? Now, if it is a real dark flower, I might take this color out of my brush. And remember what I said in the very first one is sometimes we'll paint out. Well, sometimes I'll put a dark, if it's a very dark flower, I might put dark back into my brush like this and pull up next to that edge and soften this right out here like that so I have a very soft edge. So I'll just lift up right into here and I'll use sometimes the side of the brush. Sometimes I'll use the flat of the brush, sometimes the chisel just to create some variation and I'll sometimes pull this in but by using dark I set up just a little light little shimmery edge to that soft edge to that uh, particular flower so sometimes I do dark sometimes I do light you know sometimes don't be you when you paint a flower as especially as you get more advanced with flowers you'll realize that a dark petal you can put on a dark edge and a dark petal will sit in front of the light part of the flower Okay, that happens depending on where the, the light is hitting that particular flower. Okay, so that happens. Not, you know, when you first study decorative painting, you'll see a lot of people say, okay, it gets lighter, 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 lighter as it comes forward. No, it doesn't. Sometimes a dark petal will sit in front depending upon how the light is hitting that petal. If it's coming from the top or if, especially if you have a light at the top and you have a petal coming at you like this, what you're actually seeing is the underside of that petal and you're looking at the shadow side of it. So if, if you're going to create the proper angle, it's not always a light color. Okay, it could sometimes be a dark color. 
I could put these petals on here. I can I can chisel on that edge like this. I can redress my brush in a little more light, and I can wiggle this back and forth like this, and I can start to lighten up that petal like that. Okay, so uh, I can do it multiple ways. So let's say I'm going to leave that kind of dark back here. I'll put on that chisel light. Then I'll just take my brush here like this, and I'll wiggle it back and forth, and this and this is where this brush becomes so very important. Very very light pressure with this brush. Just tap into your mosaic here. Just take your mosaic out like this, and that mosaic is very important. And just wiggle that back and forth like that and let this flower just paint itself. Very simple. Now, you could stroke. If you stroke, you start to get really, really stiff, but you could stroke there too. That's just as just as well. Um, and uh, I keep dry, uh, flipping some of that extender around here, and that'll sometimes pop a little hole. You're just going to muss it up there. But uh, keep moving that brush around. So that's one way of doing it. I can make more pink color here. If I say, okay, I want this to be more pink over here, I can put more of a pink color into that flower right there. I can vary it. I can have more yellow or whatever. You can wiggle it back and forth. You can actually, you can also put on that light little edge, and then you can push into the light, and you can pull back like this, and that will pull in some light as well, and it'll make it look different. Now, remember the one thing that I said about flower painting uh, from the very beginning? A couple of things I want you to remember is your base brown goes in everywhere, <laughs> but the other thing is variation is the key to interest. And when you paint these flowers, so I might have one here, you know, where I put on the edge and then I pull in and here, if I pull in in the shape of a fan, you can see that that petal, it gets built kind of round there, okay? Uh, and so sometimes I might pull a piece here with some, some heavier strokes and I'll sometimes pull out, sometimes pull in. Uh, but if I want something soft, I generally wiggle my brush and if I want something more powerful, I generally stroke my brush so it comes in more powerful. Okay, so you're using your brush in many different ways. Uh, sometimes stroking, sometimes flattening it out and wiggling and giving a, a, you know an indication of it. Let's put a petal right back through here. So one of the things that's important, I'm going to tap in a little bit of light here into my brush, so I have a little bit of light here and you know onto my brush and let's go back here and let's put a petal so one of the important things about painting flowers is that you don't line up you can kind of see i have an edge here and an edge here coming down through here so i have a little v shape in here i don't want my next layer of petals to line up exactly with that one because that will uh you know make the flower seem a little strange so i'll line up some petals let's just go these guys right here this will look That'll look fine. Then I'll wipe my brush. Now, if again, if I want it to be darker, I might pick a little bit of dark color into my brush and paint up into that edge and just, just wiggle it back up and forth into that edge, right up into that edge right here, and pull down, and you get that petal in there like that. If I want this petal to be a little lighter, then maybe I'll widen out that edge just a bit more tap into some of this light and we'll pull down or we can even begin to stroke down like this to set this next petal right up on you know right up in front of that one there we'll give a little more of a light and we'll pull this in set that in there that's kind of pretty we'll drop an edge right in here like that so I use the brush to draw the edge so anytime I want an edge, I use just a chisel of the brush to draw an edge like that, see? Then I'll wipe the brush, and then I'll, if I want it softer, I just wiggle right into it, right into that edge. Just wiggle up to it, and it, let the softness of that fusion brush do its job here. So we'll pick out that edge here. So you can see I'm building this flower, see? And push up into that. That's a little bright right there, so I just put a little dark in my brush, just tap in a little darker color, and just tap right up into that light there. And you can always use your finger too to back it back out. And we'll put that in there. 
just like that just a little bit of that in there you can add other colors let's restate maybe a little more yellow put a little more yellow now into this flower up over here so as I then pick up a little more white and a little more yellow as I come in and add these other edges here smaller and the big thing about it is you're starting to add some other petals the big thing about it is don't line them up don't line them up don't you know so if you haven't you know you don't want to make all your lines exactly the same here and maybe you can wiggle it back and forth and you can stroke it to get some different looks I'm using very very soft pressure as I paint these very very soft pressure as I paint these so here and bring that up but you see some of the different colors that can come in your flowers really kind of pretty you can restate what we call restate redraw some edges here and if I want a petal here to kind of swoop a little bit, okay, then I start to swoop my brush slightly like this, and that'll swoop the petal. You know, just kind of lift the petal up. So now your brush direction becomes very important here. You know, if you want a petal to start to cup, so if I want this one to start to, to cup here, to cup up like that, then and I state it and I draw it and I paint it kind of cupped here let's come across the edge here so as you continue to build in and you can build light and you know you can build when you build these flowers you, I'm slowly getting lighter and lighter here as I'm coming more towards the light and more towards the front. Now, and a couple of things about multi-petal flowers as you build them. So here I'm very soft. I get more of an edge as I come up here into the front. More of an edge. And the other thing that I do is that I get, make the petals smaller and smaller and smaller as they get in here to the center. So here in the back, they're very large petals. Remember, we might soften that just a bit. Um, they're very large as they come into the front now they start to get smaller and smaller here they start to get smaller the petals physically get shorter and smaller because those are younger less mature petals younger petals in the flower here as they're coming in put little edges in and you can swoop them in you can pick up dark in the brush if you need dark pick up light here once I say okay I kind of like that I'm gonna I'm gonna take my dark back out again right into this area and you can a lot of times I like to use my finger and just kind of soften my dark sometimes I use the brush uh, a variation again variation I love to paint variation I love to use all your tools your hands and paper towel whatever it needs to get that job done, just put a little cool color in there. A little red violet, a little touch of black. That's your nice contrast. Then I'll just wipe that color out of my brush. We'll take our, remember what we did with the first blossoms? We did some of our yellows and the whites. And you don't mix them up real well. Just kind of tap them through together. And that's what I do on these too. And I just kind of tap and I build... And then let the color run out. Just little tiny, very soft little taps in the back. And heavier color up into the front. So you build more of that edge. And little bits into the back. Here. There we go. Just like that. And you can you get a pretty you know looking little flower there and of course you can lighten it up have it a little bit lighter a little more pink after you put that on if you want a little more you know pink look to one side you can just pick up more of a pink color and you can stroke in or you can stroke out either way and when the strokes just when you when you start adding strokes the strokes um, add more power to the flower so the wiggling that you do initially very soft and subtle 
and then the strokes add more power to the uh, to the flower here there we go and you can see that that just adds quite a bit uh, you know quite a bit there to the flower um, sometimes I don't like the center quite as open as that so I'll tap this down just a bit close that up just a bit there and so you you go from a very very soft soft and then slowly build the flower pick up a light color nice mosaic on your brush put a mosaic in nice light color use then the chisel of the brush to start to to sketch on the edges of the petals here where you might want to have some petals and of course you're centering that up from your your circle and and uh, kind of following that along then you can wipe your brush you can use a little dark in your brush a little dark in your brush to wiggle back and forth to set up a soft little edge sometimes let that edge disappear so wiggle it back and forth you can if you want the flower to be a little lighter then pick up a little light and you're wiggling back and forth like this just a little pressure on the brush and that will set up a softer little expression of movement and now you've got some of those edges now I want to state some lighter more defined edges uh, let's get a little lighter. if you see everything I do is tapping that in model brush but I want some lighter more defined edges up here into the front heavier color and wiggle that back in the front light color causes this flower to advance and you can see it. what I'm doing here is I'm just setting up the advancing areas of the flower in the receding areas of the flower here and then I slowly refine and develop and build that flower from there okay and uh, you'll see as you'll see darks and when you look at that you'll see you'll see some of the different techniques that I use now when I come into a flower just like this well I'll put on some of that light softer color then maybe I'll take some dark on a shadow and just so I'll put on a dark edge and pull the dark in and then reverse back up to the light so looking at a flower I mean, when you're looking at a flower you sometimes look at it from petal to petal okay here I'm because I'm gonna turn this one against the light I might put a dark in there okay um, but then uh, when you get to some of these others uh, you know here I use more lights and whites and smaller light strokes when you got in there and you'll see that all in the in to the step photos when we come into the leaves I'm gonna do the leaves uh, you know leaves and flowers uh, one of the things that I did like with the first blossoms that I developed in the series one of the things I do is I, I keep the leaf and the flower technique pretty similar so with that leaf we put on a color and then we did some overstrokes heading towards that center vein line now that's very similar to the blossoms themselves and so they will have the same type of look and that's what we want to do when we paint leaves whatever you do to your leaves you want to paint them with the same type of technique that you did the flowers with so uh, you know let's say for instance I'm gonna put some uh, some leaves same kind of colors I'll come in here with a you know with a, a base green or maybe a base uh, green plus some of my uh, you know yellow green I'll put some colors I might have a blue green in there I'll put you know I'll put in some leaves sometimes I just come in and I'll wiggle in a lot of darks like this and then I'll come in and define those into leaf shapes so I might just touch in a lot of darks and you can see like even on this one and you'll see it in some of the step photos I even touch some darks in here you know this gives the impression of another leaf way back there or you use that dark dark to help that contrast back in there remember because some of those darks make those flowers and stuff look lighter so if I wanted this flower right here to look really really light maybe I take some of my dark green and add some of my uh, dark blue to that and even a little bit of black or even a little red violet which is the coolest and I drop that right in there like that and all of a sudden that makes that flower look a lot lighter because it's what we call simultaneous contrast it plays the colors against each other so I would wiggle in some color in here like this and get some of these cooler greens to warmer greens and then once I set that all up in there like that then I'll start to um, change this this look right here right into uh, flower I mean right into leaves so I might take my some of my green and maybe a bit of yellow here and a uh, bit of white 
I'll set up a little bit of a mosaic under my brush, and I'll do the same type of thing that, uh, let's just come up with this one first. Here is, I will sketch on the edge, or, or the directions of, uh, maybe sketch on some of my leaves that I want. And then I'll add some of its vein line, this look of its vein line here, that I want to have a you know vein line there and there. And uh, then we'll come in and we'll start to just wiggle in and fill and you can stroke in, you can pull in, but you, you know, I will vary, again, vary some of those things depending on where that leaf is. Sometimes I'll stroke in quite heavy, but uh, instead of base coating the whole leaf like we did the first one, we're going to kind of put in some color and outline it and then start building it. And uh, we'll get a little lighter color here and a lighter color put a little lighter edge on it drop some of that color in here like this now i can stroke that in if it's a forward leaf to give more power to it or i can wiggle it in to let it kind of soften out see that wiggling kind of softens it all back out here so when i could if i want to lighten it up i can strike it quite a bit lighter and then wipe my brush pinch wipe my brush and then just wiggle that back and forth like that. The angle is very important. So I'm always heading towards that vein line there. And I can strike a little more like a green. So a little different coloring in there. Right in there like that. And he stayed a nice little light. I kind of like that light on that one. Let's drop a little bit of that light on this one. And, you know, and you can pull in, stroke in from the edge. If the leaf needs to get darker, paint some, put some dark in your brush and darken it. You paint what it needs. That's the key to everything you do here. You paint what it needs here. So this is how I approach and start to build up. And you can see these leaves starting to really come forward. Now, either I'd have a darker shadow under here to help this leaf come forward you know forward again or I would have to uh, increase its light um, a little bit more here on this side to help it lift off of this surface here and again I could stroke in or I can just take my brush way back here like this and I love to do this just wiggle it back and forth and that just gives you some soft it even strikes them in here and just wiggle a little bit and you get a really nice looking leaf there that and it's like I was, you know, in painting this summer with lots of the teachers of the system. They all agreed the the key to this entire technique is this brush, and learning how to just get soft with this brush. But see, once I have that, then I can come through and just add little bits of edges and disappearing things and start adding other little leaves going around here, you know, coming out and and um, all different kinds of directions and ways and impressions and and start building your um start building your flowers that way okay so everyone's a little bit different you set up you can work on a wet background you can work on a dry background which i do on some of the lessons here and then but the what the most important thing for everything that you do is that you set up a, a, a mosaic or some color to work into. Just like we did with the beginning blossoms, setting down some of that uh, medium white kind of color on there and then painting into it. Here we want to set down some color. It could be a wet background or it could be an oval. You set up a mosaic, some red, some yellow, some blue, some violets. You set up a mosaic, look for that mosaic, and then you kind of sketch on the outlines of the, of the petals, okay? and uh you know pick up some light always keep a model brush don't mix it up to a solid color we have a tendency to mix on our palette too much and when you look at my palettes here you'll see that there's a lot of color movement in here there's not a lot of uh you know solid one color you'll see a lot of color i am constantly very much aware I'm very very careful not to um to uh, over mix my colors if I over mix them, it becomes one solid color. And then my brush, when I do that wiggling and I come around, my brush does not have as much life uh, to it. So we want to be very careful uh, just how much we do. So as you're looking at those, um, as you're doing it, bringing that in. The other thing is the petals, when you do multiple petals, they get a little smaller as they come in. Watch your angles. So you can, you can sit there. If I want a petal to come across... 
So if I want a petal here, let's just say here, let me grab a little lighter white kind of color, and I want a petal here, you know, I can make something that comes across. I will sometimes just put a petal here like it goes across like that, and maybe just a little bit of it here. Now that's going to make it look like the petal that you're looking more at the edge of the petal. Whereas if I come here and pull down the long one here, you're looking more at the flat edge. Of the, you're looking more at the flat of the petal. So I can come in here and give multiple petals here to this flower just by in, in just by putting in multiple layers here, edges. It's the edges. And then here, when you just see two or three of them pulling in here, it's not as, it, it won't be as many. So if you want to see something like here, okay, so I got multiple edges. That's how I did this one that's right here. Once I set that up, I just come through and strike through and put in multiple edges, and I can get those multiple edges, those looks there too. If you want to uh, make a petal look bigger, then don't put in as many strikes, little chisel line strikes like this pulling back in just put in a couple of them and you'll get <clears throat> just a couple of petals and the flower actually flattens on the front uh, here so you're in control look very very carefully at those you can strike across on little edges like that you can uh, pull in you can flatten it out there's a lot of different ways watching the angles of your brush and the each one of these lessons are made to turn these flowers slightly a little bit different use your brush wiggle it and then sometimes stroke it, and that's going to give you all of that uh, that variation. And then lots and lots and lots and lots of practice, okay? And uh, if you have any kinds of questions with this whatsoever, you can visit our Painted Simply website. We're on the Academies of Decorative Painting also. Uh, go into uh, that particular website, and there you will. Um, we can show you how to, or if you have any kinds of questions, we can answer any of those questions, and sometimes we'll show you by just filming another little thing for you. But uh, watch your angles, watch your brush, and uh, sketch on the petals this time as opposed to just pulling petals. Sketch them on and wiggle it in, and you can lift out at any time. So if you get too much light into something, just redress your brush back into some into some dark, color into something there, and lift that dark back out, and lift that light out, and push that light right into position that you might need with that dark. And don't forget the finger works too, but you can leave just a little tiny edge and shape your flowers with that. This is the key. One brush is all you need. And one reason why I picked this so small is because you can sketch it around, okay? You can sketch around those flowers and keep it, just keep it modeled and use different pressures too. And try not to set up a habit of stroking just one way and you'll paint beautiful flowers. But you have to practice about a thousand of them, okay? Thanks very much for joining me. I hope you've uh, enjoyed it. And um, if you, again, you have any questions, let us know. We'll be happy to help you. Enjoy your painting simply with blossoms. And we'll see you over on some of the other books and roses and rose modeling and landscape. Thanks a lot.